What's up guys? So the whole reason for this video is I want to show you guys how to tether your Sony camera on the cheap. And the reason why I want to do that is if you're anything like me, I wanted to provide a way to see my images as I shoot them. And especially indoor, not necessarily on location, but indoor shoots, you know, like a homemade studio or whatever the case may be, where you can set up a laptop and a long cable to connect to that laptop. You know, sometimes it is very beneficial to be able to see something a lot bigger than that little three inch screen, because as we all know, pictures always look great on that three inch screen. So if you're like me, you jump on Google and you start searching and you find a lot of other tutorials on there on how to tether your Sony camera. And then you run into some, I guess, expense issues, if you will. It's not cheap. A lot of times when you watch these tethering videos, when you search Google and you find websites and stuff like that, a lot of the recommendations is to pick up things like this. This is from Tether Tools. It is a very, very high quality cable, in my opinion. Pretty high quality. Um, you know, it's uh, gold plated. It's, you know, for professional use. And what I really like about this cable is that it's uh, orange. The one thing though is you'll be spending a pretty penny for uh, this cable here. And um, we're gonna see how much this cable really is. 15 feet, right? High visibility, $36.95. And then on top of this cable, you're going to need to purchase one of these guys, which is looks like a piece of plastic and a string on there that wraps around your cable and then to your camera so that if someone yanks or does trip on the cable, it doesn't, you know, damage your camera, you know, because it's, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and this is how it works. And this is uh, $20. So you're spending a little bit over $50. In addition to that, you're going to need to get software, software like Lightroom, which is $10 a month. Yeah, Lightroom comes with Photoshop anyway. So you probably have a subscription to Lightroom. But if you don't, um, you know, and you use Capture One, Capture One is $200 for the, the Sony software. And I think it's like $300 for the all camera software. So it can get pretty expensive. Uh, but I'm also going to show you software that's free that can be used, you know, with uh, your tethering cable. And most of you probably already have Lightroom and or Photoshop, so it's not going to be a big deal. But let's just say you don't. Let's just say you don't have those items and you still want to be able to tether everything to your laptop. Well, you're going to need this type of software that I'm going to show you anyway. So I think it's good to show you basically how to get everything for just, I believe, $8. That's it, just eight bucks. So let's, let's get to it. So we're gonna go to google.com for multiple reasons. I could put the link down in the description, which I will, but that link might be broken dependent on if Sony changes the path to their software or not. But for the most part, um, if you use Google, then it should pop up and it should be easy to find. So we're gonna use Google and we're just gonna type in Sony image edge software as you can see i already typed it in previously so we're going to click on the very first link on the top and then it takes you to the image edge software website a lot of people don't know about this image edge software just yet it's it seems like it's pretty new but they discontinued the old one in, in favor for this one and so hopefully you guys can find this a lot easier to use um i know i do and the great thing about this software it's not just software so you can connect your camera to your computer, but it's also software that you can edit your raw files, you can view it, and it, it's just like Lightroom, but free. Not as powerful as Lightroom, obviously, but definitely free. And it's all you're gonna need to get everything working with your $8 tethering solution. So, so from here, you're gonna wanna click on supported devices. And the only reason why I'm, I'm here on the supported device section is because you're gonna wanna make sure that your camera is listed here or else the software is just not gonna support it. As you can see here, it actually shows all the way down to the mirrorless NEX version or of the E-mount cameras. I personally own the uh, NEX 5N. That was my very first mirrorless camera. Then I switched over to the SLT models and that's for a different video, but I'm personally a A-mount shooter. So let's go see how that works out for me. And then I'll just click on supported devices again. I'll click on A-mount 
and the camera I have is the A99. I also have the A58 and I also have the A99 Mark II. Oh, here it is on the very top. So with the A99 Mark II, as you can see, I can do remote shooting. I can do display live view. I can do all that stuff with the software. Not bad. So let's get to it. We're just going to download. I own a Mac here, so I'm just going to download for Mac. I'm going to save the file. The file is relatively small, it's 12 megs. Double click on it and it's going to install. Super easy to do. I mean, it's, it's really hard not to be able to get this thing going, but I'm going to show it to you step by step. We're just going to double click on this install package and I'm going to continue, continue. I'm just going to take all the defaults. I'm going to agree to the license, continue, agree again. And then I'm going to click install and then uh, put my password in so that I can install it. Installation was successful. I'm going to move the installer to the trash. And then that's it. It's really, really simple at that point. All right, so we have here my A99 Mark II. What I'm going to do is configure the camera so that it can tether to the laptop. So configuring your camera, all you would do is go to the menu section. And then there's going to be a what looks like a briefcase over there. You click on the briefcase and then setup number three. So you want to go to setup number three. There's going to be something that's called USB connection. Make sure that it's US, uh, make sure that PC remote is selected. So you select PC remote and then you go to the right and you go to go to setup number four. In setup number four, you have PC remote settings. What you want to do is click on PC only or PC camera. Now the difference between PC only and PC camera is that if you want the files to go to your PC and not your camera, then it's PC only. Pretty obvious. If you want it to be PC plus camera, it's going to transfer your cam your files to the PC and or in my case, the laptop for MacBook and copy the file to your camera. I normally like PC plus camera because you know me, I'm Mr. Redundancy, right? I got dual camera slots here. So I already got du duplicate mirrored uh, files on these two cards and then I'm going to have another file. So I'm going to have three places where I'm going to have files, one on the laptop, one on this card and then one on this card. Once you configure the camera, once you download the software, all you need left is this guy. This is the only cost to you for this tethering solution. This is a 15 foot cloth covered. It's, it's not the plastic kind that you normally see in cables, but it's 15 feet. It's the same length as this guy here. The difference is one is orange. So if, if the color of the cable makes a difference to you, then you probably want to go with the more expensive tether tools. But if you can, if you're okay with not using the orange, then you can use this cable here, which will cost you eight dollars. And uh, you're gonna need something with cloth on it so it can dig in and um, not slip. So let's get to it. So how do you get this cable for eight bucks? Let me show you. All right, to purchase the eight dollar cable, I just go to Amazon.com. So you're gonna want to type in micro USB to USB A cable, fifteen feet. The brand that I picked up was called iSeeker. I'll put a link in the description below for this cable. But uh, it's uh, basically a 15 foot, the brand is iSeeker. Uh, it's type A mail to micro B mail. All right, so obviously you're gonna have to wait for the cable to come through the mail, but once it does and you have the cable in hand, you already have the software installed, you've already configured your camera. The only thing you need to do left is now hook everything up. So let's do that. So the first thing you're going to need to do is plug the micro USB end of the cable into your camera. You're going to plug the other end, in my case, a dongle. But if you don't need this dongle, then you don't have to worry about it like I do. And then, of course, connect this other end to your laptop. Once those are connected, then you turn your camera on and then it'll say connecting to your laptop. This is what it's going to look like. It's going to say connecting. Okay, so once you have your camera plugged in, what you want to do is go into your applications folder and then you want to go into your imaging edge folder and what you want is the remote app. And then the next thing you want to do is make sure that you save or you configure where you want to save the files. In my example here, I'm saving everything in the capture folder. So all the files that I take from this camera will now go into that directory of which Capture One will pick up and then present to me in its viewer. But 
it doesn't matter because we're not talking about Capture One or Lightroom. And the examples I'm going to show you is in Capture One, but you can also do it in this free software for Sony. So let's do that real quick here. All right, so this is the remote control. So I can actually control the camera's manual mode, shutter speed up and down if I wanted to, one and one hundredth, one and one eightieth. I can control the raw settings and you know, pretty much everything is available, but a lot of it as far as the settings that you're gonna even care about will be available. All right, so we're currently in the remote app, but in the viewer. So if we go to the viewer here on the top left corner, another window will pop up and so now we have the viewer and the viewer is where we're going to see where all our files are going to come up what they're going to look like after i shoot them etc etc now i'm going to take off the lens cap and show you guys what it looks like on the laptop the lens cover is off i'm going to bring my shutter speed all the way down and obviously we're out of focus so let me take the hood off so i can do a manual focus here all right so this is me hand holding this camera pointing it at this monitor over here and so that's why you guys are seeing it on my monitor here so this is a remote control so whatever this camera sees is what the software sees pretty simple right i think it's pretty cool now let's get back to it here now let's go to viewer okay and let's just take a shot and see what happens let's take a shot of this monitor here and let's get it in focus and we'll take a shot all right that was a very long exposure so it's probably very blurry and then we're going to see you know it is an 85 meg raw file so we're going to see how long it takes to get to the computer but once it does it pops up into the viewer app and there you go so i'm able to see every single shot after i take it in a studio type environment which is where this would match up for me and um, everything my camera sees in the remote app my computer sees so i can also record everything if i wanted to go that route too so only two apps you have to be concerned about which is the remote app and the viewer app let's go clock it and see how long it takes in a real life shoot okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna test how fast it is from when i click the shutter button to when it hits the computer okay well actually to when it hits the computer and when capture one picks it up okay we go one i can't really hold the camera very well but we go one two Three. All right, so we're measuring the time. It's at three seconds now. Uh, I don't believe it's going to take too long. You'd have to remember this is an 85 meg file and we transferred the file in eight seconds. So that's pretty quick. Let's try it again. Ready? One, two, and take a step back. Okay, one, two, and three. Let's see how long this one takes. I'm assuming it's going to take around the same time. I'm thinking about eight seconds. And there you go, 7.92 seconds. So, ready? One, two, three. I'm going to assume that, again, it's going to be about eight seconds. If we get eight seconds, then we can pretty much determine it's about eight seconds. And there you go, 7.73 seconds. So the next thing that we're going to try and do is going to take a series of shots. One, two, three and we're gonna measure how long it takes for this to happen. And it looks like the first one is about 10 seconds. The second one is comes in at about 14 seconds. The third one comes in at about 18 seconds. So we got 10.2, 14.3, and 18.7. We're about four seconds apart. I think that's actually pretty good. Now, when you have this cable like this, you could easily trip over it cable pops out it's probably not a good idea you know it's it's on your camera it might damage the input uh the micro usb input it can do a lot of things and, and that's why this, the jerk stopper this jerk stopper here comes in handy and that's why you know it's, it's good to have but you don't really need the jerk stopper and what i'm about to do is show you how you can do it without the jerk stopper and how you know it's actually I wouldn't say it's stronger or better, but it does definitely work very well, especially when you have uh, this cloth type of uh, cable here. So let's get to, to that portion. 
So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to use a combination of tie straps and the L bracket. So in this case, if you just use the L bracket on either your Sony A99 or your Sony A7 body, it actually does a pretty good job. But if you had some tie straps with you, they're pretty cheap, very inexpensive. All you have to do is wrap it around your L bracket. However, if you want a solid mount for your cable to prevent it from damaging your camera in case you slip on it or tug on the cable you just need to tie a tie strap around the cable itself and this is why it's important that the cable has cloth that way the tie strap will dig into the cloth and have very nice grip preventing anything from happening when you trip on your cable so you tighten the tie strap around the cable and then the other tie strap around your L bracket if in case you do not have an L bracket, then the Sony cameras have those loops on the side of the camera. You can easily do the exact same thing using the loops instead of the L bracket. Again, you put one around the cable itself to ensure that it has a solid grip around the cable and then another one inside of the loop. The difference is the loop would have a little bit play just to prevent the cable from being pulled out. But on the cable side, you want to make it fairly snug. That way it digs into the cable and that if you yank on the cable, it won't pop out of the port and or damage your camera. After everything is done, you just get a scissors and you cut the, tie, the ends off of the uh, tie straps. Last but not least, if you want to remove the cable from the camera, you simply cut the tie strap. It's really that simple. That's pretty much it. All you spent was the seven dollars and whatever so eight dollars if you round up all you spent was the eight dollars for this one cable the software was free it's from sony it works with sony cameras um and and that's it um instead of spending so much money on this and the jerk stopper you know it, it can get very expensive all right guys well thank you very much for watching this video i really do appreciate it if you like this video please hit that like button if you want to see more photography related videos please hit that subscribe button and again thank you very much for watching i do appreciate it and i hope to see you in the next one bye